Hey, hey. Hey, y'all. Welcome to Trail Talk, the uh, 50 Ways to Celebrate Winter in Oklahoma okay. edition. It is almost that time for our winter. Yes, it is. I guess technically it's still fall. It is. But, you know, in Oklahoma, or especially around here, you better catch fall while you can. Uh, yeah. Because it's just a couple weeks and then we jump right into exactly. it. Or we go back to summer sometimes. And today, um, it's blowing through. Fall is blowing right yeah. through. The you wind want to see foliage, you just stand at the window and you can you better catch it real yeah, fast. Catch those leaves as they fly by. Well, I'm Edie. And I'm Mary. And we are coming to you live from our classroom studio here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center in Duncan, Oklahoma. And we sure hope that uh, you guys enjoy this episode. It's just going to, I think it'll get people in the Christmas spirit. I hope. I'm in that spirit. I am too. I'm ready. Plus, there are some fun things that are not even associated with Christmas. Mm -hmm. Just that fun. You can celebrate uh, winter. Twice. Celebrating winter, not yeah. necessarily Christmas. E exactly. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so um, let's let's just jump to this first one. So this is called Winter Fest. Now, doesn't this look like a fun thing to go to? Look at that giant tree. This is in Tulsa. And, um, that, you know, sponsored by Arvest, yeah. um, but there is, uh, ice, there's an ice skating rink out here and you probably can't see it. I bet it's over probably here behind, behind that tree. tree. Um, I've never been to Winterfest, <laughs> but, um, I, it sounded like a really fun thing to do. Just an activity for uh -huh. the whole family. Yeah. And I mean, my group, my kids love to go ice skating. I Maybe. like to try. Yeah. I, I, I think I've I, done it once. Yeah. I think I spent more time on the ice. I with yeah. my bottom on the ice. Yeah. I uh, I went ice skating maybe twice, but mm. my kids love it and they do fall a lot, which is one reason fall I la don't. La. Yeah, fall a la, lot, la, la, la. Yeah. Um, but some cool things about this. Well, it's at, it's right at the BOK Center. Mm -hmm. There in Tulsa. In Tulsa. Um, but they have like um some reduced admission. Or free admission mm -hmm. nights, I guess reduced is probably yeah. half price on Mondays with donation no, donation of a non perishable canned food item. So they're helping raise. It's yes, a, there's benefits to it. Right. Yeah, you're helping someone mm -hmm. else. You get to go have a good time. Bank. You're helping the mm -hmm. food bank, and then um, patrons receive half price admission for skating on warmth Wednesdays when you donate. A gently used coat, blanket, scarf, pair of, or pair of gloves, benefiting nightlight in Tulsa, which, uh, you know, down here in Southwest Oklahoma, we're not as uh, familiar with the Tulsa uh, charities right. and those organizations right. that help people. But you guys know, as well as we do, that these are always worthwhile and it would be super fun just to go up there, oh, sure. especially once the kids are out of school. If you want to just take a little mm -hmm. one, another day, day trip, trip. Yeah. Um, drive up to Tulsa and go spend the evening out there mm -hmm. and take some things to yeah. donate to someone else. It'd be a super fun thing to do. Anyway, it's um, open from November 19th, which is, what is that? That's this week. That's Today like, is what, the 7th? Team. Yeah, Friday. I guess it starts yeah. this Friday all the way through January 3rd. So all the way even after New Year's. Yeah. So you guys could, uh, you, you could definitely have some time to go there. Oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Make a trip Maybe you have some family coming in. Yeah, exactly. That'd be a, that'd be a very fun yeah. thing to go do. Exactly. So anyway, check out Winterfest in um, Tulsa. Uh, <laughs> Here comes Tina. She's going to help us out. <laughs> well, this right this next picture is iconic. If you live around here, that probably needs no introduction. Exactly. You guys know what this is. And I just realized this was after an ice storm. This particular one was taken. Mm -hmm. It is, but mm -hmm. there are help. pretty. Isn't that beautiful? Those lights shining off of the ice. Yeah. This is in Chickasha at their festival of lights this yes. is truly yeah, yeah. Ice. this is one of my favorite Love it. favorite i mean my they kids were, hardly ever changed i don't i don't even know how long it this runs has been going on well how many years it's been oh, happening yeah. because my kids were tiny like babies the first time i went i bet it's more than 25 years oh, I'm sure maybe even 30 and they have they always had ice skating there too, or was that a recent addition? Because no, I don't remember I, them always having ice skating, but they do have it now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is a newer, one of the newer things that they're doing. Um, but it starts uh, Saturday. Yep. It starts this coming Saturday and goes through December 31st. 
every Sunday or Sunday through Thursday from six to 10 on the weekends from six to 11. And it's fun. You can drive through there. We used, you know, you can put your kids in pajamas. Oh yeah. They have pictures yes. with Santa. Drive through there or you can park and get out and go walk through there. Mm -hmm. There's sleigh ride. Yeah. Uh, there's like the, the horse drawn little Carriage lighted uh -huh. carriages. There mm -hmm. are sometimes they have like exotic animals there's I think animals there. i think i've seen yeah. out there they have the ferris wheel yeah out there now yeah. hot cocoa oh yeah the hot cocoa they have big old cinnamon rolls and all kinds of stuff but the music you know it's just yeah and, and it's free this year they're going to have a shuttle and i think that's probably from like a parking lot to so there's not the much festival of lights there. but they're going to have nights where they have different food trucks they're going to have pop-up shops and those change mm -hmm um pictures with santa all kinds of entertainment so you guys all of these events winter fest chick -a festival of lights if you will just google the name of the event they have very detailed websites mm -hmm. that can give you all that give you a lot more information now these two do not all of the events we're going to talk to you about do but these two uh, yeah have a lot <clears throat> of really cool things but um this one this is one of my very favorite it's a tradition yeah i mean it, it just it's a tradition it is now we have two different sets of dates and times well this one is december at the depot it's just oh the that's true there. yeah oh, oh yeah oh yeah so they're their um train depot area mm -hmm. in Chickasha, and that part of town is kind of participating yeah they're participating as during the festival of lights and so some of that's the, events, the shuttle takes them from there yeah yeah and that's where the food trucks and pop-up shops and all those things are going to be and so there's the first four weekends of december yeah and so uh i mean chick is going to be hopping on the weekends yeah yeah so Not that mentioned there's the drive-in there too exactly yeah you could just, I, so much so much to do over there and that place is it began in 1993 so 2021 we're almost on almost 30, 30 years. years almost yeah. 30 years this is 28 years i guess yeah. wow that's awesome yeah that is so cool <laughs> um so yeah they um they're they are going to have a lot of fun things going on over there and you know if you're from the duncan area that's 45 minutes yeah. at the most yeah. to get up there to chick -a and usually i mean even if there is a long line because sometimes there is a line of cars True. to get in mm -hmm. generally speaking it i mean you don't wait I don't think I've ever waited longer than 20 minutes for right, a right, to get yeah. in through there. And, um, and there's you some can, secret tricks to get in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a little place on the box on yeah. there. But you, yeah, if you find a parking spot, then just yeah, get out and walk mm -hmm. up there. Um, but, uh, oh man, we were talking about something and I had a great thing. I was the 30 years share about that. Um, well, it's gone now. It has. That's too bad. You guys were about to get. I uh, have something super funny yeah. laid on you and I just totally lost it. It happens. It'll be back. <laughs> if I think of it, I'll set it back up before I say it. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Um, the next event, opening night. Opening night. In, it kind of looks like Studio 64. Yeah, thing. doesn't it? In downtown Oklahoma City. I don't know if you, Mary said she'd never, never been. been. Kevin and I went there on one of our very first dates. Really? Actually, yes. Just three of y'all both into the mix. There. It really did. <laughs> I mean, and uh, they have like a big ball that they like drop the New York City and ball. fireworks. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Oklahoma downtown has um, <clears throat> like uh, underground tunnel system the, the, and so you, yeah. you you don't have to go outside you can walk in the tunnel kind of covered in there yeah, yeah. and uh, get from place to place and they just have tons of entertainers and mm -hmm. shops open and food we have gone down and gone to a, a thunder game the thunder always plays a game on new year's eve uh -huh. and then go to open night after there. that yeah because i think this was oh, a, so like a ballpark fun. is usually where it's at or it's going to be at the Bricktown ballpark well that's where, where a lot of it takes place yeah yeah the fireworks it's, uh -huh. yeah it, it's all right down there mm -hmm. in that yeah that Bricktown, Bricktown area. area yeah and so there's tons of things uh to go do uh you can even well run, that's you can even well, that's run the, a little 5k yeah, that's the 5k um it it's it begins on Mickey Mantle Drive right outside yeah. the ballpark um 
wristbands yeah. that says they're just eight dollars in advance mm -hmm. and yeah. go on sale the 26th of november yeah so um super fun thing to do mm -hmm. and you probably could even get a a tick a couple of tickets to the thunder game beforehand mm -hmm. and get out there in time for mm -hmm. all the, the ball fun stuff. Yeah, it's just a really a really fun fun thing to do and i always i always think about it um <laughs> we don't always go but uh we have been there before and so it sounds like a lot of yeah fun. it's a fun thing to do <clears throat> looks like you can get um the wristbands online or at 7-eleven mm -hmm. stores mm -hmm. yeah so you know start start making your new year's mm -hmm. eve plans and uh, that's right yeah buy your get tickets them. yeah or your wristbands your yeah um okay we're going to travel back to tulsa now oh look at him yeah so the tulsa zoo they're open um nine to well they let people in until four and then they close the gates at five. five and they are open 363 days a year so you can you can go there uh they're they have you know different price ranges and everything depending on age you can be a friend of the tulsa mm -hmm, zoo so, mm -hmm. and get in for free but i thought this sounded so fun they have a little program called breakfast with santa mm -hmm. and you get a hot breakfast arts and crafts meet santa and then you get to go see the reindeer cool is that i know oh, i thought that so not just santa but the reindeer yes too. yes what a great idea so you know if you wanted something to do during the day when you're in Tulsa, There's go yeah, go this. start off with breakfast with Santa yeah, and then go you into your night there at Winterfest. Yes, exactly. Get a little ice skating in, burn that cocoa off. Perfect day. Yeah. Perfect. Your nose might be as red as his. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that might happen. You don't ever know. Okay, now we are going all the way west across the state to Woodward. More pretty lights. Oklahoma they have something called crystal christmas and i think it's like crystal beach or something is where this area is okay, called that's how they came up that name. i really don't know um it says their location is crystal beach park okay yeah there you go i don't know much about woodward i've only been there a couple of times we have some friends who live up there. there but yeah um but anyway they have uh santa they have train rides food trucks uh cookies with santa hay rides they have a lot of different things that uh go on yeah hay rides um so it starts this weekend this weekend also on saturday through december 31st mm -hmm. all day long there's something to do wow. <clears throat> all day it's what this said sunday through oh no that okay the times are sunday well it's probably decorated yeah because oh, here it has time six it. to eight a lot of the stuff is from six to eight like yeah. the train rides and things that will start at six yeah so six to nine on uh sunday through thursday friday saturday six to ten so you know what if you have friends or relatives out in woodward or you're just driving through mm -hmm. even mm -hmm. take a little time and go to this crystal mm -hmm. christmas mm -hmm. i think it looks like a very fun yeah, event. a lot of stuff to do i sure. love how these towns that they just go all out and decorate their parks mm -hmm. that's one thing i miss about duncan's parks we had some we used great to. christmas decorations i don't even know why they stopped I'm putting them sure. out you know leadership used to do it i believe didn't they yeah the i mean halliburton used to work on mm -hmm. it and help put it up it, it was we, you know it's a community there was two effort. different you could drive through fequa and then on the other side of the highway yeah and, yeah, where the Purple Pavilion and the mm -hmm. pool and all mm -hmm. that are, mm -hmm. and they had, and they had a a, a lot a, a big nativity. Yeah. you know that it wasn't live, but they had like these huge just light displays. Yeah, and mannequin kind of things they were, with the, the a nativity motion. scene. It was mm -hmm. it was very cool. Yeah. Um. But anyway. Uh. But not to I I digress but um i just love it that towns um really pour themselves mm -hmm. into this and try and keep a tradition going i mean like chick has been going for yeah. almost 30 years and so. people from all around go mm -hmm. Make yeah. it, i mean that yearly mm -hmm. yes exactly and we have another one we're going to talk to you about here in just a little bit but um we are gonna actually we're gonna kind of go tulsa and oklahoma city area and 
A nutcracker. What is more iconic than the nutcracker? I, exactly. I. Oh. Oh, the Yukon High ballet. School yeah, or Yukon Ballet. Oh, Yukon has a ballet, ballet. Mm -hmm. the Oklahoma Ballet. Oklahoma Ballet Incorporated. And okay, Oklahoma Ballet Incorporated okay. is performing in uh, Yukon the first weekend in December. Mm -hmm. um, so there's another option for you. Um, this one's a little I, bit different though. Right, yeah, we have the traditional Nutcracker Ballet, the Oklahoma City Ballet and Tulsa mm -hmm. Ballet are both performing. The uh, original, yeah. traditional Nutcracker. Um, Tulsa's is December 10th through December 19th. Oklahoma City is December 11th through December 19th. At the Civic Center Music Hall for but Oklahoma City. This mm -hmm. little uh, picture here, you notice this says race. So race and the uh, Oklahoma City Broadway are doing two different presentations of a hip hop nutcracker. Now that sounds like something, yeah. I think that sounds so very cool. Um, so the Oklahoma City Broadway hip hop nutcracker is November 24th. And that's at the Civic Center Music Hall. Right, right, where the Oklahoma City Ballet performs. And then the race dance company hip hop performance is at OCCC there on 74th and 240 right there. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this hip hop one, the, the race is a dance company and they also have performers from Douglas High School, John Marshall High School, Northwest Classen, Oklahoma Centennial Mid-High, PDT Youth Company and US Grant High School who all auditioned to perform in September. Now, I don't know if the race dance company is made up of those high school students or if they allowed those high school students to be in this performance. Right. It says it's them. their ninth annual. Yeah, but I, I'm i very intrigued by this hip hop nutcracker. I mm -hmm. think that that sounds, Mary was talking about like her daughter likes to dance hip hop and how much fun that would be to get to take just the different interpretation of it exactly yeah. so anyway that's december 3rd and 4th the right. first weekend the same weekend as the yukon uh nutcracker mm -hmm. ballet mm -hmm. is um this performance at um o triple c so if you want to do something a little different honestly going to see the nutcracker is kind of one of those things i told kevin not very long ago i said I think that's something I really want to go do. I think it'd be fun. I would love to see a live mm -hmm. performance of mm -hmm. a Nutcracker. Mm -hmm. That I've always wanted to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just one of those Did you say things. you performed in? So uh, <laughs> Tina, our person behind the camera, um, was a performer in the uh, Yukon Ballet. Central Oklahoma Ballet. Central Oklahoma Ballet. That's what it Central was. Oklahoma Ballet Troupe, eight I guess. Years. And oh, she did it for eight years. Wow. Well, she's famous, y'all. We're going to put her on We're going to, yeah. Yeah. You've seen her We before. can do a Tina Nutcracker. You've seen her. <laughs> a Tina's Nutcracker. We might have a little something going. We might have a surprise for y'all before Christmas gets here. <laughs> um, okay. This next event. Speaking of surprise. Yeah. Okay, guys. Eagle watching. This is something that bird watchers across Oklahoma and probably some surrounding states oh, I'm sure. have known about for a very long time. During the winter months, eagles actually fly south from Canada and stop in Oklahoma and, cool spend, and spend their winters here. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And, um, and they are everywhere. So 800 to 2,000 of them. Yeah, depending on the year. But, and they join nearly 80 pairs of bald eagles that live here in Oklahoma so year it's round. like, oh, here comes our relatives. They're here <laughs> for the winter, you know? Yeah, everybody's coming in for the winter. Like here we cousin go. Eddie coming in. Yeah, for... yeah. yeah. Um, but it starts in, no in November and early December and peaks in January and February. Um, that, and they even have bird watching uh, like events to, Just to, to get a chance to watch the eagles. Um, but uh, they, um, they like to hang out around Oklahoma's lakes and rivers because they like fish, obviously. Yeah. Um, and they'll roost together 
They have seven foot wingspans, which means they're about the same size as the golden eagle that uh, Mr. Volker brought, uh -huh, brought on a few weeks ago. And um, so here are some tips for eagle, eagle watching. watching. Yeah. The best time is around sunrise or sunset. Wear warm, neutral colored clothing and appropriate outerwear. Hats, gloves, scarf, you know, like windbreaker. You know how it can be so windy. windy. But the neutral colored clothes, that's probably one of the key parts right there. You want to blend in. And then more camouflage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't you don't want to stand out. Right. Okay. Don't draw attention to yourself. Yeah. Bring binoculars, a camera with a zoom lens, and a field guide. I, I just love this so much. Everything I'm reading about <laughs> it makes me want to do it anymore. Um, and for some of the events, you need a portable camp chair or a lawn chair. And always call ahead for some up-to-date eagle viewing information. Now, there, if I'm not mistaken, there are some cameras set up at some of the locations. That stay there. That stay there. So you can watch online. You can watch the eagles online. Oh, so you, online. Can, you can like get on there and just watch the area. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so you can, you don't have to go there to see them. But of course, you'll you have to catch them while they were on the camera. Yeah. But also you would, um, know where they are mm -hmm. if you if you see them on the camera then you know that maybe a get their habit or their habits down as to what time they do show up true you know, as to plan your day as to what would be the better yeah. time to go if you wanted to go in person yeah so in other words mm -hmm. stalk those eagles <laughs> 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 we're not at any way encouraging stalking here we are talking about bird watching <laughs> okay so you're not going to believe how many different places so are many. for these. Uh, they're called hot spots. There's like probably 15. Yeah. So Sequoia National Wildlife Refuge, Robert S. Kerr Res Reservoir. Reservoir. That was da dangerous. I, I don't know what I was going to say. Eagle Tour and Loon Watch. I mean, that's like a, that's a link. If you typed mm. in Eagle Tour, Tour and Loon, Loon Watch, Watch, that you thought you take that link and it will give you information about an event for watching, for watching those. Them. There's a George M. Sutton Avian Research Center. That's the one with the That's webcam. webcam. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tin Killer, Keystone, Thunderbird, Chickasaw National Recreation Area, which is just over here in Sulphur, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Lake of the Arbuckles, which is right over there too. Right. Um, Salt Plains National Wildlife Ref Refuge, Eagle Roost Nature Trail, Arcadia, Quartz Mountain, and Black Mesa. So basically, so many places. Mm -hmm. just about every state park in Oklahoma, mm -hmm. um, and then some additional locations. Right. So they just come and they just, just amazing bless our state with their grace majesty. and majesty. I was thinking nobility. I mean, they are just look at that picture. You can see that big beak on the. Uh, Anyway, go enjoy some <laughs> eagle watching. That's try right. something you haven't tried before and get out there and watch some eagles. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a fantastic mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. The next event is something that I did not know was a thing. Winter fishing. Winter fishing at Lake Eufaula. They have an enclosed indoor fishing area. It is there. I, I'm telling you, I you've thought, heard about her fishing expedition. What an amazing thing mm -hmm. to have! So, um, it it was formerly called Fountainhead State Park, uh, just south of I-40 near Shakota. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's like a hundred and two thousand acre reservoir. It's huge. Yeah, I don't know if you've been a to tiny place. It. Yeah, but um, the marina makes year-round fishing possible with an enclosed heated dock and tackle shop oh my goodness and the largest fish yeah largest fish in the state have been caught at eufaula so um and you can i mean you'd have to check the website you might even have to call them most oklahoma lakes you know there's rv there's mm -hmm. camping and all that Sites. but sometimes mm -hmm. they close the campsites down in the winter so you would want to check ahead if that was something that you were interested Wanted to in. actually camp uh -huh. while you were there. Yeah. Um, and but I mean, some of them have um, it says there's they have yurts. Yeah, they have yurts. Y-U-R-T-S yurts, which are like little very primitive, like little cabin things. Right. Um, mm -hmm. 
And then some places have lodges mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. Some of the lakes do. Or and there's so many Airbnbs anymore and yeah, things like that you yeah. can stay at. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if if camping, if that uh, option is not available, you could still go and stay oh, very yeah. near the lake and go enjoy some fishing. Right. Winter fishing, who knew? I mean, it's not the same as ice fishing. Well, Obviously, that seems very cold and <laughs> uncomfortable to me. But inside a heated dock area, now we're bad. talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's no, nice shanty. But you know, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking grumpy old men. When I think yeah, of ice <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> okay, we're changing gears again. We're going to break away from nature a little bit. Take a little trip to Guthrie, Oklahoma. Historic Guthrie. Historic Guthrie, Oklahoma's first. Uh, state, capital. state capital, but just for a little while. Sorry, Guthrie. <laughs> yeah, just for um, Anyway, so Guthrie has a couple of, th first they have this territorial Christmas. And during the territorial Christmas, they, they have been doing this for over 35 years and people uh, dress in full Victorian we costume. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah, they have home tours. People portray, you know, these, type characters. yeah, they have different characters because they want you to really get immersed into the whole Oklahoma territorial period. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they uh, dress like that. They have all sorts of events that go on. Um, this little flyer on November 27th is like a day long event thing. Small business Saturday. Yeah, and they're um, kind of kicking off some mm -hmm. super fun things that go along with the territorial oh, Christmas. And it says they have a lighted Christmas parade at six and their tree lighting will be at seven that night. Yeah. So, I mean, what a fun, I'm sure their community really supports Gets this. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is a very big um, undertaking to have all these costumes oh. and all this stuff. And to keep it up for 35 years. Yeah, for sure. Um, <clears throat> but they have Victorian walks in the evenings and windows are dressed as well as the people, you know, I just like, I just think it sounds Stepping back in time. super cool. You can get uh, food from vendors like peanut vendors <laughs> on the street, you know, I'm just about mm -hmm. imagining the little chestnut. I've always wanted to get a roasted chestnut. It's like you see I, in the movies, you know, like in New York on the side street. Andy and I did that when in London. My son and mm -hmm. I were in London one year around Christmas time. And we bought some of those roasted chestnuts. Yeah. I mean, I can say I did it. I, the chestnuts were a little bit, um, they were hot. Chewy. So they were like chewy a little bit. The texture was a little Yeah, different. the texture was a little bit off. But I mean, it was still fun. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. who wouldn't want to buy right. sure. chestnuts roasting on an open fire? The man that he has little I, gloves. His yeah, fingers his fingers. Yeah. yeah. This peanut vendor made me think of the little monkey with the, you know. <laughs> the with ding, the, ding, yeah. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing you know but anyway I don't know why I went there a little with this <laughs> <laughs> anyway so uh go to Guthrie go there this um is going on from November 27th through December 11th so there's a couple of weeks in there yeah. that you could get over to Guthrie and it's not that far I mean it's probably two hours of a two, yeah, two and a half maybe. hour drive, maybe from maybe. Duncan. So it's a little bit of a drive, but man, I think it would be super fun. And during that, well, no, the dates are different. So from November 26th through December 23rd, the Pollard Theater, which is a pretty famous theater there in Guthrie, Guthrie, they are um, having this live performance of It's a Wonderful Life, a live radio play. Now, It's a Wonderful Life is one of our very favorite movies Christmas. yes we watch that movie every single year and um i just got so excited <laughs> about this that i just went online and my husband and i are gonna go she'll be able to tell us just to i was. will i'm gonna tell you how you awesome better go is. there too i know that. i know yeah. i need you to just work all that in together yeah but um i just think that that live performance will be super fun so I will come back and tell you guys all about it. I'm excited um, to hear yeah, about it. Yeah, uh, but um, anyway, I mean, that's what that's why we're doing. You this. Just kind of throw back and you just go back in time. Yeah, you know, yeah, radio yeah. performance, Victorian walk through town. Exactly, and, I mean, and that I mean, that's the life whole purpose. Was easy or not easy? That, I didn't mean it that way, but you know, things were slower, different. Time over time. Yes, yes. Yeah, very different, and it's just you know they they go to all that effort. Let's let's enjoy. Give support them. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
And you know, that's Bring kind of spirit home with you. Yes. The the reason for this whole episode is of trail talk is to just kind of introduce you to some of these things. And listen, you know, I know, you. I know it said 50, um, but there's no way I would be able to cover, we could cover all 50 events. Plus, um, there's it's fun to explore some things for yourself too. Right. right. So we're just kind of, you know, wetting the old taste buds and <clears throat> giving you a there's little plenty out there to find. Oh, plenty for sure. Okay, this next one is super cool. Elk City. Now, I don't know if you straight west on I-40. I love this bus. Straight west. Look at this. They have a double decker bus like you would ride in London. Mm -hmm. And it takes you through their lighted Christmas in the park. Yeah, um, Elk City's Ackley Park. Um, they light everything up on Friday and Saturday nights. They have this Mistletoe Express, the Candy Cane Train, the Centennial Carousel. Um, and they have a new trolley yeah. also. Oh, cool. In addition to this, there's that, a trolley. Right. Mr. and Mrs. Ride. Claus. Yeah, so I mean, I was just so excited. I thought Elk City, oh my gosh, here's another one of those communities that really pulls off something but and you can see people back there yeah walking. they've got lights everywhere all around this bus mm -hmm. um so this park is probably just chock full of super cute things to oh, see sure. mm -hmm. and um, to have things like that it would have to be yeah mm -hmm. yeah so take a drive out on mm -hmm. i-40 guys and go check this place out and take a ride in that double decker bus i love that yeah it does look like tina said it looks like the night bus on harry potter harry potter harry potter all right, let's go. Here's something a little faster than a bus. The Polar, Polar Express. Express. Now, this is um, I all these pictures and everything I got from the uh, Oklahoma Tourism website that or the um, website for each of these events. So the Polar Express in Oklahoma City runs from November 13th. So it started it's already started this last weekend and goes all the way through December 31st. Mm -hmm. And I went on the website to see if I could, um, I didn't want to buy tickets, but I wanted to see how much tickets were and whether there were, well, they talk about um, first class passengers. Yeah, there's there's and all different that. packages, I think. You yeah, can purchase. but um, I couldn't get I, I went in about three or four layers and I never got all the way to where the pricing was, mm -hmm. but there are still some open dates, but not that many. Mm -hmm. There are uh, limited days and times during the day. Because you have to have your ticket. I mean, you can't get well, on a train without you've the You've seen the movie, right? You got to have the ticket. <laughs> you got to have the ticket. <laughs> um, anyway, they recreate the classical children's story. They have actors. Um, you have your golden ticket for the conductor. They serve hot chocolate and Walker's shortbread. Evidently, that's the big sponsor mm -hmm. is Walker's shortbread. Dancing chefs, the story, uh, the first gift of Christmas after Santa boards to greet families. And you guys know what that gift is, the silver bell. Mm -hmm. You better hope you can hear it when it jingles. jingles. Yeah. Um, they engage the passengers and caroline um all of those super fun things i i'm just hot 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 chocolate i'm just imagining and you also you can get the the mug, the mug oh that's the true what comes in yeah yeah that's that's true that's one of the packages includes mm -hmm. that mug mm -hmm. so i mean what a magical thing for your kids yeah to go definitely experience. pajamas too i mean oh, you gotta go in for the pajamas. sure for sure yeah I just think that that would be such a fun event. I mean, I know a lot of elementary schools, my a, a lot of elementary schools do that, but I mean, to really be on the train, Tina's taking her grandkids. She's giving it a big thumbs up. She says it's fantastic. So there you go. Check it out. Go to the website and don't, don't delay. I mean, yeah, if this it sells, is, I think it sells out every year. Yeah, if this is something that you're interested in, get out there and get your tickets now. Okay, so the next, we have two things here on the same. There are living nativities. So one is at Shepherd's Cross and Shepherd's Cross is in Claremore, Oklahoma. So that's kind of like the east side mm -hmm. of the state. And this is like an Amish farm or something. They have... Um, they have animals, they have uh, um, 
over Let's 100 see. costume participants. Yeah, over 100 people. I mean, this that's a it's pretty a production. Huge, huge thing. And I think sheep, it, mules, donkeys, chickens. I think it's all inside in that barn. barn. Uh huh. I think it all takes place inside that so barn. It's in, it's in the barn, and indoor nativity scene. Yeah. Um. And then they have uh, farm fresh pecans, Amish pecan candies, baked goods, hot beverages. Uh, festive Christmas and sheep related gifts for all you sheep lovers out there like me, <laughs> I'm a sheep lover, uh, handmade items, Christmas tea items. So there's like something for the whole It says family. they have um, two performances too. It, it, each, live performances. Each not or right. each not. Oh yeah. So I guess maybe there's a stage or something. They offer those every hour, it says. Oh, yeah. okay. So probably you walk to a certain area and maybe stop. That, and, uh, yeah, features yeah. two with Elizabeth, the story of Christ's birth from Elizabeth, John the Baptist's mother, perspective in the innkeeper's wife. Oh, wow. That's cool. Now, this is only from December 9th through the 11th. So um, again, go to this website, Living Nativity mm -hmm. at, at Shepherd's Cross and uh, check that out. I think that that would be a really cool right. thing. And then this last one is, this is at Boys Ranch Town, which is a, um, I mean, it's kind of what it sounds like. It's a, it's a large work, it's a ranch and it's in Edmond. Mm -hmm. And um, a young uh, boys who live there who for some reason or other can no longer live with their families. Um, there isn't always an effort to reunite if that's a possibility. And that's so there, it's not like um, it's not really a boy's home. No, no, it's a, it, it's like a, I mean, they, they live there, they go to school, they get, they, they take part in activities, there. they work with animals, they learn how to like repair things and work with wood. I mean, they do a lot of fun things Hands with the boys and, and they live in houses with house parents. <laughs> And um, so anyway, it's a it's a really fantastic <clears throat> place. It's part of the Oklahoma Baptist Homes for Children. And it's a super great. And it's free deal. of charge. But yeah, this is a drive through. Um, it says it's free of charge free. in their gift to the community. Yeah. And they do this every single year. And so the boys who live there are all participating at some level. Maybe mm -hmm. they help behind the scenes. Things, or, yeah. yeah. Or maybe they're in costume out there, and then other people come and uh, you know participate right, as well right. to help them out. Right. And um, anyway, this is a really great thing, and this is December third through the fifth from seven to nine, and it's just a drive-through thing, and there are several scenes Different along setup. the way. So um, anyway, wow, so many cool things. I, I, I want to go do. Them. I know. I love Let's our go. state. Where we are we have, going? We have so many first. fun things. <laughs> it's just so great there's something for everybody out there um so you guys um you know find something fun and do something different this year mm -hmm. than what you've done before just kind of branch or out a little to bit your traditions yeah you know? yeah so um tomorrow uh, a representative from the toy shop keeping with here that in duncan yeah. yeah is going to come and talk to us about their role in our community um, the toy shop has, I don't even know how long they've been doing what they do, Several, but they have assisted families in providing Christmas for their children for years and years and years. And an they awesome can only do it because the community supports mm -hmm. them and helps them um, gather all of right. the gift items and, and, things. Yeah. and the donations yeah. and things. And it's not all just frivolous toys. They no. give, they are able to give them some practical things as well. Of course. And so um, kids make out wish lists, the whole deal. I mean, it's it's awesome. It is so awesome. Anyway, I'm very excited for their representative to come. It's either going to be Kim or Kathy. Um, I think Kathy. Uh, and so you guys tune in tomorrow because it's going to be a really cool episode of Trail Talk. And we're going to try to, you know, get you in the Christmas spirit. That's right. One way or the other, more, we are going to get you there. More. So um, you guys um, have a great evening and uh, tune in tomorrow. Three o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Be, we'll be right here. So um, we'll see you guys then. Happy trails. Happy trails. <laughs>